Chapter forty five of the Canterbury Tales by Geoffrey Chaucer. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Parson's Tale, Part Four. Secretur Remedium Contra Peccatum Ira. Forty eight. The remedy against ire is a virtue that men clepen mansuetude that is debonarity and eke another virtue that men call impatience or sufferance forty nine debonarity withdraweth and refraineth the stirrings and the movings of man's courage in his heart in such manner that they ne skip not out by anger ne by ire sufferance suffereth sweetly all the annoyances and the wrongs that men do unto man outward saint jerome saith thus of debonarity that it doeth no one harm to no wight nay saith nay for no one harm that men doen or sane he nay ashoffeth not against his reason this virtue sometime cometh of nature for saith the philosopher a man is a quick thing by nature debonair and treatable to goodness but one debonarity is informed of grace then is it the more worth fifty patience that is another remedy against ire is a virtue that suffereth sweetly every man's goodness and is not roweth for no one harm that is due unto him the philosopher saith that patience is filk virtue that suffereth debonairly all the outrages of adversity and every wicked word this virtue maketh a man like to god and maketh him god's own dear child as saith christ this virtue discomforteth thine enemy and therefore saith the wise man if thou wilt vanquish thine enemy learn to suffer and thou shalt understand that man suffereth for manner of grievances and outward things against the which for he must have for manner of patiences fifty one the first grievances of wicked words filk suffered jesu christ without grudging full patiently won the jews despised and reproved him full oft suffer thou therefore patiently for the wise man saith if thou strive with a fool though the fool be wroth or though he laugh all gate thou shalt have no rest the other grievance outward is to have damage of thy cattle there against suffered christ full patiently when he was despoiled of all that he had in this life and that nas but his clothes the third grievance is a man to have harm in his body that suffered christ full patiently in all his passion the fourth grievance is an outrageous labour in works wherefore i say that folk that make in their servants to travail and do grievously or out of time as on holidays soothly they do great sin here again suffered christ full patiently and taught us patience when he bare upon his blessed shoulder the cross upon which he should suffer and despite his death here many men learn to be patient for cert not only christ and men been patient for love of jesu christ or for guerdon of the blissful life that is perdurable but certes the old paeans that never were christian commended in and use it in the virtue of patience fifty two a philosopher upon a time that would have beaten his disciple for his great trespass for which he was greatly amoved and brought a yard to scourge the child and when this child sought the yard he said to his master what think ye to do i will beat thee quoth the master for thy correction forsooth quoth the child ye oughtn't first correct yourself that and lost all your patience for the guilt of a child forsooth quoth the master all weeping thou sayest sooth have thou the yard my dear son and correct me for mine impatience of patience cometh obedience through which a man is obedient to christ and to all him to which he ought to have been obedient in christ and understand well that obedience is perfect one that a man doth gladly and hastily with good heart entirely all that he should do obedience generally is to perform the doctrine of god and of his sovereigns to which him ought to have been obeisant in all right wiseness sequitur de Arcadia, fifty three after the sins of envy and of ire now will i speak of the sin of akadi for envy blindeth the heart of a man and ire troubleth a man and akadi maketh him heavy thoughtful and raw envy and ire make in bitterness and heart 
which bitterness is mother of akadi and benemeth him the love of all goodness then is akadi the anguish of a troubled heart and saint augustine saith it is annoy of goodness and joy of harm certes this is a damnable sin for it doth wrong to jesu christ inasmuch as it benemeth the service that men ought do unto christ with all diligence as saith solomon but akadi doeth no such diligence he doeth all thing with annoy and with rawness slakeness and excursation and with idleness and unlust for which the book saith accursed be he that doth the service of god negligency then is akadi enemy to every estate of man for certes the estate of man is in three manners outer it is the state of innocence as was there a state of adam before but he fell into sin in which estate he was holden to worch as in herring and adoring of god another estate is the estate of sinful men in which estate men been holden to labour in praying to god for amendment of their sins and that he will grant him to arisen out of their sins another estate is the state of grace in which estate he is holden to works of penitence and certes to all these things is akadi enemy and contrary for he loveth no business at all now certes this foul sin akadi is eke a full great enemy to the life flood of the body for it nay hath no purveyance again temporal necessity for it forslayeth and forslugeth and destroyeth all good temporalis by recklessness fifty four the fourth thing is that akadi is like to him that been in the pain of hell because of their sloth and of their heaviness for they that been damned been so bound that they nay may neither well do nay well think of akadi cometh first that a man is annoyed and encumbered for to do in any goodness and maketh that god hath abomination of such akadi as saith saint john fifty five now cometh sloth that will not suffer no unhardness nay no penance for soothly sloth is so tender and so delicate as saith solomon that he will not suffer no unhardness nay penance and therefore he shendeth all that he doeth against this rotten-hearted sin of akadi and sloth shoulder men exercise himself to doin good works and manly and virtuously catch in courage well to doin thinking that our lord jesu christ quiteth every good deed be it never so light usage of labour is a great thing for it maketh as saith saint bernard the labourer to have strong arms and hard sinews and sloth maketh him feeble and tender then cometh dread to begin to work any good works for certes he that is inclined to sin him thinketh it is so great an emprise for to undertake to do in works of goodness and casteth in his heart that the circumstances of goodness be in so grievous and so chargent for to suffer that he dare not undertake to do works of goodness as saith saint gregory fifty six now cometh one hope that is despair of the mercy of god that cometh sometime of too much outrageous sorrow and sometime of too much dread imagining that he hath doing so much sin that it will not avail on him though he would repent in him him and forsake sin through which despair or dread he abandoneth all his heart to every manner sin as saith saint augustine which damnable sin if that it continue unto his end it is clept sinning in the holy ghost this horrible sin is so perilous that he that is despaired there nis no felony nay nor sin that he doubteth for to do as showed well by judas certus above in all sins then is this sin most displeasing to christ and most adversary soothly he that despaireth him is like the coward champion recreant that saith creant without need alas alas needless is he recreant and needless despaired certus the mercy of god is ever ready to every penitent and is above in all these works alas cannot a man bethink him on the gospel of st luke fifteen whereas christ saith that as well shall there be joy in heaven upon a sinful man that doth penitence as upon ninety and nine rightful men that needen no penitence look further in the same gospel the joy and the feast of the good man that had lost his son 
one his son with repentance was returned to his father can they not remember him eke that as saith st luke twenty three capitulo how that the thief that was hanged beside jesu christ said lord remember of me when thou comest into thy reign forsooth said christ i say to thee to-day shalt thou be in by me in paradise certes there is no one so horrible sin of man that it nay may in his life be destroyed by penitence through virtue of the passion and of the death of christ alas what needeth man then to be in despair sith that his mercy so ready is and large acts and have then cometh somnolence that is sluggy slumbering which maketh a man be heavy and dull in body and in soul and this sin cometh of sloth and certes the time that by way of reason men should not sleep that is by the morrow but if there were cause reasonable forsoothly the morrow tide is most convenable a man to say his prayers and for to think and on god and for to honour god and to give an almost to the poor that first cometh in the name of christ lo what saith solomon whoso would by the morrow awaken and seek me he shall find then cometh negligence or recklessness that recketh of nothing and how that ignorance be mother of all harm certes negligence is the norris negligence nay doth no force one he shall do in a thing whether he do it it will or badly fifty seven of the remedy of these two sins that saith the wise man that he that dreadeth god he spareth not to do in that him ought doin and he that loveth god he will do in diligence to please god by his works and abandon himself with all his might well for it to do in then cometh idleness that is the gate of all harms an idle man is like to a place that hath no walls the devils may enter on every side and shut in at him at discomfort and by temptation on every side this idleness is the plethoric of all wicked and villainous thoughts and of all jangles truffles and of all ordure certus the heaven is given to him that will labour and not to idle folk eke david saith that they may be not in the labour of men nay they shall not be whipped with men that is to sing in purgatory certus then seemeth it they shall be tormented with the devil in hell but if they do in penitence fifty eight then cometh the sin that men cleppen tarted toss as one a man is to latred or tearing ere he will turn to god and certus that is a great folly he is like to him that falleth in the ditch and will not arise and this vice cometh of a false hope that he thinketh that he shall live long but that hope faileth full oft fifty nine then cometh latchness that is he that one he beginneth any good work anon he shall forletten it and stinton as doing they that han any white to govern and nay taken of him nay more keep anon as they find in any contrary or any annoy these been the new shepherds that letten their sheep wittingly go run to the wolf that is in the briars and do no force of their own governments of this cometh poverty and destruction both of spiritual and temporal things then cometh a manner coldness that fresheth all the heart of man then cometh undevotion through which a man is so blent as saith st bernard hath such languor in soul that he may neither read nor sing in holy church nay hear nay think of no devotion nay travel with these hands in no good work that it niss him unsavoury and all appalled then waxeth he slow and slumbery and soon will be wroth and soon is inclined to hate and to envy then cometh the sin of worldly sorrow such as is clepitrisia that slayeth man as st paul saith for certes such sorrow worketh to the death of the soul and of the body also for thereof cometh that a man is annoyed of his own life wherefore is such sorrow shorteth full off the life of a man ere that his time be come by way of kind remedium contra peccatum acadi sixty against this horrible sin of acadi and the branches of the same there is a virtue that is called fortitudo or strength that is an affection through which a man despiseth annoyous things this virtue is so mighty and so vigorous that it dare withstand mightily and wisely keeping himself from perils that have been wicked and wrestle against the assaults of the devil for it enhanceth and enforceth the soul right as equity abateth and it and maketh it feeble for this fortitudo 
may endure by long sufferance the travails that have been covenable sixty one this virtue hath many species the first is clepid magnanimity that is to say in great courage for certes there behoveth great courage against faculty lest that it nay swollen the soul by the sin of sorrow or destroy it by wan hope this virtue maketh folk to undertake harder thingus and grievous thingus by their own will wisely and reasonably and for as much as the devil fighteth against a man more by quaintus and by slight than by strength therefore men shall withstand in him by wit and by reason and by discretion then are there the virtues of faith and hope in god and in these saints to achieve and accomplish the good works in the which he proposeth firmly to continue then cometh surety or sickerness and that is one a man ne doubteth no travel in time coming of the good works that a man hath begun then cometh magnificence that is to say one a man doeth and performeth great works of goodness that he hath begun and that is the end why that men should do good works for in the accomplishing of great good works lieth the great garden then is there constance that is stableness of courage and this should be in, in heart by steadfast faith and in mouth and in bearing and in cheer and in deed eke there been mo special remedies against decadi in diverse works and in consideration of the pains of hell and of the joys of heaven and in trust of the grace of the holy ghost that whole ye gave him might to perform his good intent sequitur de auricia sixty two after acadi will i speak of avarice and of covetous of which sin saith st paul that the root of all harms is covetous ad timotheum sexto capitulo for soothly one the heart of a man is confounded in itself and troubled in that the soul hath lost the comfort of god then seeketh he an idle solace of worldly things sixty three avarice after the description of st augustine is licorousness in heart to have earthly things some of the folk saying that avarice is for to purchase in many earthly things and nothing give to him that him need and understand that avarice nay stamp not only in land nay cattle but sometime in science and in glory and in every manner of outrageous thing is avarice and covetous and the difference betwixt avarice and covetous is this covetous is for to covet such things as thou hast not and avarice is for to withhold and keep such things as thou hast without rightful need soothly this avarice is a sin that is full damnable for all holy writ curseth it and speaketh against that vice for it doeth wrong to jesu christ for it bereaveth him the love that men to him goen and turneth it backward against all reason and maketh that the avaricious man hath more hope in his cattle than in jesu christ and doeth more observance in keeping of his treasure than he doeth to service of jesu christ and therefore saith st paul ad efficios quinto that an avaricious man is in the thraldom of idolatry sixty four what difference is betwixt an idolastre and an avaricious man but that an idolastre per adventure nay hath but one moment or two in that the avarish man hath many for certes every florin in his coffer in his moment and certes the sin of momentry is the first thing that god defended in the ten commandments as beareth witness exodi capitulo twenty thou shalt have no false gods before me nay thou shalt make to thee no grave thing thus is an avaricious man that loveth his treasure before in god an idolaster through this cursed sin of avarice of covetous come in these hard lordships through which men been distrained by talages costumes and carriages more than their duty or reason is and eke they taken of their bondmen amerciments which might not more reasonably been clepid extortions than amerciments of which amerciments and ronsoning of bondmen some lords stewards saying that it is rightful for as much as a churl hath no temporal thing that it nay is his lords as they sing but certes these lordships do in wrong that bereaveth their bondfolk things that they never gave them augustinus de civitate libro nono sooth is that the condition of thraldom 
and the first cause of thraldom is for sin genesis quinto sixty five thus may ye seein that the guilt deserveth thraldom but not nature wherefore these lords nay should not much glorifying them in their lordships sith that by natural condition they being not lords of thralls but for that thraldom cometh first by the desert of sin and farther over there as the law saith that temporal goods of bond folk been the goods of their lordships ye that is for to understand the goods of the emperor to defend in him in their right but not for to rob in them nay reven them and therefore saith seneca thy prudence should live benignly with thy thralls filk that thou clepest thy thralls been god's people for humble folk been christ's friends they being come to Bernil with the lord sixty six think eke that of switch seed as churl springeth of such seed springen lords as well may the churl be saved as the lord the same death that taketh the churl such death taketh the lord wherefore i read do right so with thy churl as thou woldest that thy lord did with thee if thou were in his plight every sinful man is a churl to sin i read this certest that thou lord work in such wise with thy churls that they rather love thee than dread i woot well there is degree above degree as reason is and skill it is that men do there devour there as it is due but certes extortions and despite of your underlings is damnable sixty seven and further over understand well that these conquerors or tyrants making full oft thralls of them that been born of as royal blood as being they that hem conquerin this name of thraldom was never erst couth till the that no said that his son canaan should be thrall to his brethren for his sin what say we then of him that pilin and doin extortions to holy church certes the sword that men given first to a knight one he is new dubbed signifieth that he should defend in holy church and not robin it nay pilin it and who so doeth his traitor to christ and as saith saint augustine they be in the devil's wolves that strangling the sheep of jesu christ and doing worse than wolves for soothly one the wolf hath full his womb he stinteth to strangle sheep but soothly the pillars and destroyers of god's holy church nay do not so for they nay stint never to pile now as i have said sith so is that sin was first cause of thraldom then is it thus that till time that all this world was in sin then was all this world in thraldom and subjection but certes sith the time of grace came god ordained that some folk should be more high in estate and in degree and some folk more low and that everich should be served in his estate and in his degree and therefore in some countries there they be in thralls one they hand turned him to the faith they make in their thralls free out of thraldom and therefore certes the lord oweth to his man that the man oweth to his lord the pope calleth himself servant of the servants of god but for as much as the estate of holy church nay might not han he nay the commune prophet might not han been kept nay peace and rest in earth but if god had ordained that some men had higher degree and some men lower therefore was sovereignty ordained to keep and maintain and defend in their underlings or their subjects in reason as fair forth as it lieth in their power and not to destroy in them nay confound wherefore i say that thilka lords that been like wolves that devour the possessions or the cattle of poor folk wrongfully without mercy or measure they should receive and be the same measure they they hand measure to poor folk the mercy of jesu christ but if it be amended now cometh deceit betwixt marchant and marchant and thou shalt understand that merchandise is in two manners that one is bodily and that other is ghostly that one is honest and loveful and that other is dishonest and unloveful of thilk bodily merchandise that is 
loveful and honest is this that there is god hath ordained that a reign or a country is sufficient to himself then is it honest and loveful that of abundance of this country that men help another country that is more needy and therefore there must be merchants to bring him from that one country to that other their merchandises that other merchandise the men haunten with fraud and treachery and deceit with blessings and false oaths is cursed and damnable his spiritual merchandise is properly simony that is intentive desire to buy and thing is spiritual that is thing that appertaineth to the sanctuary of god and to cure of the soul this desire if so be that a man do his diligence to perform him, it albeit that his desire nay take no one effect yet is it to him a deadly sin and if he be ordered he is irregular certus simony is clepid of simon magus that would and bought for temporal cattle the gift that god had given by the holy ghost to st peter and to the apostles and therefore understand that both he that selleth and he that buyeth thingus of spirituals been clepid simonials be it by cattle be it by procuring or by fleshly prayer of these friends fleshly friends or spiritual friends fleshly in two manners as by kindred or other friends soothly if they pray for him that is not worthy and able it is simony if he take the benefice and if he be worthy and able there nis no one that other manner is one a man or woman praying for folk to avance in him only for wicked fleshly affection that they have unto the person and that is foul simony but certus in service for which men given things as spirituals unto their servants it must been understand that the service must been honest and else not and eke that it be withouten bargaining and that the person be able for as saith saint damasy all the sins of the world at regard of this sin am as thing of naught for it is the greatest sin that may be after the sin of lucifer and antichrist for by this sin god forlooseth the church and the soul that he bought with his precious blood by him that given churches to him that been not dying for they put in, in thieves that steal in the souls of jesu christ and destroy in his patrimony by switch undying priests and curates and lewd men the last reverence of the sacraments of holy church and such givers of churches putting out the children of christ and putting into the church the devil's owen son they sell in the souls that lambs should keep into the wolf that strangleth them and therefore shall they never hand part of the pasture of lambs that is the bliss of heaven now cometh hazardy with his appurtenances as tables and raffles of which cometh deceit false oaths tidings and all ravings blessing and renaying of god and hate of his neighbours waste of goods bespending of time and some time manslaughter certus hazardous nay mo not been without in great sin whilst they haunt that craft of avarice come and eke blessings theft false witness and false oaths and ye shall understand that these been great sins and express again the commandments of god as i have said false witness is in word and eke in deed in word as for to bereave thy neighbour's good name by thy false witnessing or bereave in him his cattle or his heritage by thy false witnessing one thou for ire or for meat or for envy bearest false witness or accusest him or excusest him by thy false witness or else excusest thyself falsely where you quest mongers and notaries certes for false witnessing was susanna in full great sorrow and pain and many another mo the sin of theft is eke expressed against god's hest and that in two manners corporal and a spiritual corporal for to take thy neighbour's cattle against his will be it by force or by slight be it by meat or by measure by stealing eke of false indictments upon him and in borrowing of thy neighbour's cattle in intent never to pay in if again and semblable things a spiritual theft is sacrilege that is to sane hurting of holy things of or of things sacred to christ in two manners 
by reason of the holy place as churches or church halls for which every villain's sin that men doin in such places may be clapped sacrilege or every violence in the semblable places also they that withdrawn falsely the rites that long in to holy church and plainly and generally sacrileges to reverend holy thing from holy place or unholy thing out of holy place or holy thing out of unholy place Rela vacio contra peccatum avaraki sixty eight now shall ye understand that the reliving of avarice is misericord and pity largely taken and men might and ax why that misericord and pity is relieving of avarice certes the avaricious man showeth no pity nor misericord to the needful man for he delighteth him in the keeping of his treasure and not in the rescuing nay relieving of his even christian and therefore for speak i first of misericord then is misericord as saith the philosopher a virtue by which the courage of man is stirred by the misery of him that is misseized upon which misericord followeth pity in performing of charitable works of misericord and certes these things moving a man to misericord of jesu christ that he gave himself for our guilt and suffered death for misericord and forgave us our original sins and thereby released us from the pains of hell and amensus the pains of purgatory by penitence and giveth grace well to do and at last the bliss of heaven the species of misericord been as for to lean and for to give and to forgiven and release and for to hand pity in heart and compassion of the mischief of his even christian and eke to chastise there as need is another manner of remedy against avarice is reasonable largesse but soothly here behoveth the consideration of the grace of jesu christ and of these temporal goods and eke of the goods perdurables that christ gave to us and to hand remembrance of the death that he shall receive he knoweth one where nay how and eke that he shall foregone all that he hath save only that he hath dispended in good work sixty nine but for as much as some folk been unmeasurable men oughten eschew full largesse that men clepen waste certes he that is full large nay giveth not his cattle but he leaseth his cattle soothly what thing that he giveth for vain glory as to minstrels and to folk for to bear him his renown in the world he hath sin thereof and knowen all mess certes he leaseth foul his good that they seeketh with the gift of his good nothing but sin he is like to an horse that seeketh rather to drink in drovey or troubled water than for to drink in water or the clear well and for as much as they given there as they should not given to him a pattern of thilk malasoon that christ shall given at the day of doom to him that shall have been damned sequitur de gula seventy after avarice cometh gluttony which is express eke again the commandment of god gluttony is unmeasurable appetite to eat or to drink or else to doin a nuff to the unmeasurable appetite and disordinance covetous to eaten or to drink this sin corrupted all this world as is well showed in the sin of adam and of eve look eke what saith st paul of gluttony many saith st paul goin of which i have oft said to you and now i say it weeping that they be the enemies of the cross of christ of which the end is death and of which their womb is their god and their glory in confusion of him that so sovereign earthly things he that is usant to this sin of gluttony he nay may no sin withstand he must been in servage of all vices for it is the devil's hoard there he hideth him and resteth this sin hath many species the first is drunkenness that is the horrible sepulture of man's reason and therefore when man is drunken he hath lost his reason and that is deadly sin but soothly one that a man is not wont to strong drink and peradventure nay knoweth not the strength of the drink or hath feebleness in his head or hath travailed through which he drinketh the more all be he suddenly caught with drink it is no deadly sin but venial the second species of gluttony is that the spirit of a man wexeth all trouble for drunkenness bereaveth him the discretion of his wit the third species of gluttony is when a man devoureth his meat 
and hath no rightful manner of eating the fourth is when through the great abundance of his meat the humours in his body been distempered the fifth is for dullness by too much of drinking for which sometime a man forgetteth ere the morrow what he did at even or on the night before seventy one in other manner been distinct a species of gluttony after saint gregory the first is for to eat before in time to eat the second is when a man get him too delicate meat or drink the third is when man taken too much over measure the fourth is curiosity with great intent to make an and apparel in his meat the fifth is for to eaten too greedily these been the five fingers of the devil's hand by which he draweth folk to sin remedium contra peccatum ghoul seventy two against gluttony is the remedy abstinence as saith gallian but that hold i not meritory if he do it only for the heel of his body saint augustine wool that abstinence be doing for virtue and with patience abstinence he saith is little worth but if a man have good will thereto but it be enforced by patience and by charity and that men doing it for god's sake and in hope to have the bliss of heaven seventy three the fellows of abstinence been a temperance that holdeth the mean in all things eke shame that escheweth all dishonesty sufficeth that seeketh no rich meats ne drinks ne doeth no force of too outrageous apparelling of meat measure also that restraineth by reason the dislavy appetite of eating soberness also that restraineth the outrage of drink sparing also that restraineth the delicate ease to sit long at his meat and softly wherefore some folk standen of their own will to eat at the last leisure End of chapter forty five chapter forty six of the canterbury tales by geoffrey chaucer this librivox recording is in the public domain the parson's tale part five sequitur de luxuria seventy four after gluttony then cometh lechery for these two sins being so nigh cousins that oft time they will not depart god woot this sin is full displeasant thing to god for he said himself do no lechery and therefore he put great pains against this sin in the old law if woman thrall were taken in this sin she should be beaten with staves to the death and if she were a gentlewoman she should be slain with stones and if she were a bishop's daughter she should be burnt by god's commandment further over by the sin of lechery god trained all the world at the deluge and after that he burned five cities with thunder light and sank them into hell seventy five now let us speak then of this stinking sin of lechery that men call avatry of wedded folk that is to say if that one of them be wedded or else both st john saith that avatyrs shillin being in hell in a stank burning of fire and a brimstone in fire for the lechery and brimstone for the stink of their ordure certes the breaking of this sacrament is an horrible thing it was make it of god himself in paradise and confirmed by jesu christ as witnesseth st matthew in the gospel a man shall let father and mother and taken him to his wife and they shall be two in one flesh this sacrament betokeneth the knitting together of christ and of holy church and not only that god forbade avatry indeed but he, he commanded that thou shouldest not covet thy neighbour's wife in this has saith saint augustine is verboden all manner covetous to do in lechery lo what saith saint matthew in the gospel that whoso seeth a woman to covetous of his lust he hath do in lechery with her in his heart here may ye seen that not only the deed of this sin is forbidden but ache the desire to do in that sin this cursed sin annoyeth grievously him that it haunten and first to his soul for he obligeth it to sin and to pain of death that is perdurable 
unto the body annoyeth it grievously also for it dryeth him and wasteth him and shunt him and of his blood he maketh sacrifice to the fiend of hell it wasteth his cattle and his substance and certus if it be a foul thing a man to waste his cattle on women yet is it a fouler thing one that for such ordure women to spend in upon men their cattle and substance this sin as saith the prophet bereaveth man and woman their good fame and all their honour and it is full pleasant to the devil for thereby winneth he the most party of this world and right as a marchant delighteth him most in chaffer that he hath most advantage of right so delighteth the fiend in this ordure seventy six this is that other hand of the devil with five fingers to catch the people in his villainy the first finger is the full looking of the full woman and of the full man that slayeth right as the basilicock slayeth folk by the venom of his sight for the covetous of iron followeth the covetous of the heart the second finger is the villain's touching in wicked manner and therefore saith solomon that whoso toucheth and handleth a woman he fareth like him that handleth a scorpion that stingeth and suddenly slayeth through his envenoming as whoso toucheth warm pitch it shent his fingers the third is foul words that fareth like fire that right anon burneth the heart the fourth finger is the kissing the truly he were a great fool that would kiss the mouth of a burning oven or of a furnace and more fools be and they that kissen in villainy for that mouth is the mouth of hell and namely these old daughters holers yet wool they kiss though they may not do and smarter them certes they been like to hounds for an hound when he cometh by the rosa or by other bushes though he may not piss yet will he heave up his leg and make a countenance to piss and for that many man winneth that he may not sin for no liquorousness that he doeth with his wife certes that opinion is false god woot a man may slew himself with his own knife and make himself in drunken of his own tongue certes be it wife be it child or any worldly thing that he loveth before god it is his moment and he is an Id idolater man should love his wife by discretion patiently and attemperately and then as she as though it were his sister the fifth finger of the devil's hand is the stinking deed of lechery certes the five fingers of gluttony the fiend put in the womb of a man and with his five fingers of lechery he grippeth him by the reins for to throw in him into the furnace of hell there as they shall hand the fire and the worms that ever shall last him and weeping and wailing sharp hunger and thirst and grimness of devils that shall in all to tread them without respite and without an end of lechery as i said sudden diverse species as fornication that is betwixt man and woman that been not married and this is deadly sin and against nature all that is enemy and destruction to nature is against nature parfait the reason of a man telleth eke him well that it is deadly sin for as much as god forbade lechery and saint paul giveth him the rein that this do to no white but to him that do indeedly sin another sin of lechery is to bereave a maiden of her maidenhood for he that so doeth certes he casteth a maiden out of the highest degree that is in this present life and bereaveth her thilk precious fruit that the book cleppeth the hundred fruit and they can say it no in other ways in english but in latin it height centesimus fructus certus he that so doeth is cause of many damages and villainies more than any man can reckon right is he sometimes is cause of all damages that beasts do in the field that breaketh the hedge or the closure through which he destroyeth that may not been restored for certus nay more may maidenhead be restored then an arm that is smitten from the body may return again to wex she may have mercy this would i well if she do penitence but never shall it be that she is not corrupt and albeit so that i have spoken somewhat of avutry it is good to show in more perils than long into avutry for to eschew that foul sin avutry in latin is for to sane approaching of other man's bed 
through which though that whilom were one flesh abundant their bodies to other persons of this sin as saith the wise man following many harms first breaking of faith and certus in faith is the key of christendom and one that faith is broken and lorn soothly christendom stand vain and without in fruit this sin is eke of theft for theft generally is for to reave a white his thing against his will certus this is the foulest theft that may be when a woman stealeth her body from her husband and giveth it to her holer to defile in her and stealeth her soul from christ and giveth it to the devil this is a fouler theft than for to break a church and steal the chalice for these avatures break in the temple of god spiritually and steal in the vessel of grace that is the body and the soul for which christ shall destroy in them as saith st paul soothly of this theft doubted greatly joseph one that his lord's wife prayed him of villainy one he said lo my lady how my lord hath taken to me under my ward all that he hath in this world nay no thing of these things is out of my power but only ye that been his wife and how should i then do this wickedness and sin so horribly against god and against my lord god it forbade alas all too little is switch truth now he found the third harm is the filth through which they break in the commandment of god in defiling the altar of matrimony that is christ for certes insomuch as the sacrament of marriage is so noble and so dying so much is it greater sin for it to break in it for god made marriage in paradise and the estate of innocence to multiply mankind to the service of god and therefore is the breaking thereof more grievous of which the breaking come in false airs oft time that wrongfully occupy in folks heritages and therefore will christ put them out of the reign of heaven that is heritage of good folk of this breaking cometh eke oft time that folk and war wedden or sinnen with their own kindred and namely thilk harlots that haunten bordels of these full women that mo be likened to a commune gong whereas men purgen their ordure what say we eke of putors that liven by the horrible sin of putry and constrain of women to yield unto them a certain rent of their bodily putery yea sometime of his own wife or his child as doing these bauds certes these been cursed sins understand eke that avutry is set gladly in the ten commandments betwixt theft and manslaughter for it is the greatest theft that may be for it is theft of body and of soul and it is like to homicide for it curveth a two and breaketh a two hem that first were naked one flesh and therefore by the old law of god they should be slain but natheless by the law of jesu christ that is law of pity one he said to the woman that was found in, in avatry and shoulder hem been slain with stones after the will of the jews as was their law go quote jesu christ and have no more will to sin or will nay more to do sin soothly the vengeance of avatry is awarded to the pains of hell but if so be that it be disturbed by penitence yet be there mo species of this cursed sin as one that one of them is religious or else both or a folk that been entered into order and subdecon or decna or priest or hospitallers and ever the higher that he is in order the greater is the sin the thing is that greatly i gregan their sin is the breaking of their avow of chastity when they receive it the order and further over sooth is that holy order is chief of all the treasury of god and is a special sign and mark of chastity to show that they've been joined to chastity which that is most precious life that is and these ordered folk been specially titled to god and of the special meaning of god for which one they do in deadly sin they've been the special traitors of god and of his people for they live in of the people to pray for the people and while they've been such traitors their prayers avail them not to the people priestess been anglis as by the dignity of their mystery but forsooth saint paul saith that satanus transformeth him in an angel of light soothly the priest that haunteth deadly sin he may be likened to the angel of darkness transformed into the angel of light he seemeth angel of light but forsooth he is angel of darkness such priestess been the sons of hell as showeth in the book of kings that they wherein the sons of belial that is the devil belial is to sane withouten judge and so fair and they 
him think if they been free and hath no judge nay more than hath a free bowl that taketh which cow that him liketh in the town so fair and they by women for right as a free bowl is enough for all a tomb right so is a wicked priest's corruption enough for all a parish and for all a country these priestesses say in the book nay con not the mystery of priesthood to the people nay god nay know they not they nay held hem not a paid as saith the book of sodden flesh that was to them offered but they took by force the flesh that is raw certes so these shrews nay holden them not a paid of roasted flesh and sodded flesh with which the people fed them in great reverence but they will have raw flesh of folks wives and their daughters and certes these women that consent to their harlotry do in great wrong to christ and to holy church and all hallows and to all souls for they bereaveth all these him that should worship christ and holy church and pray for christian souls and therefore hence such priestess and their lemons eke the consent to their lechery the malison of all the court christian till they come to amendment the third species of avatry is sometime betwixt a man and his wife and that is one they take no reward in their assembling but only to their fleshly delight as saith st jerome and they reckon of nothing but that they been assembled because that they been married all is good enough as thinketh to them but in such folk hath the devil power as said the angel raphael to toby for in their assembling they put in jesu christ out of their heart and given himself to all ordure the fourth species is the assembly of him the bin of her kindred or of him the bin of one affinity or else with him with which their fathers or their kindred and dealeth in the sin of lechery this sin maketh them like to hounds that take in to keep to kindred and certus parental is in two manners other ghostly or fleshly ghostly as for to deal in with these gobsibes for right so as he that engendereth a child is his fleshly father right so is his godfather his father is as spiritual for which a woman may in no less sin assembling with her gob sid than when with their own fleshly brother the fifth species is thilk abominable sin of which that no man uneath ought speak nay write natheless it is openly rehearsed in holy writ this cursedness do in men and women in diverse intent and in diverse manner but though that holy writ speak of horrible sin certes holy writ may not been defiled nay more than the sun that shineth on the mixen another sin appertaineth to lechery that cometh in sleeping and this sin cometh off to them that been maidens and eke to them that been corrupt and this sin men crepen pollution that cometh in four manners sometime of languishing of body for the humours been to rank and abundant in the body of man sometime of infirmity for the feebleness of the virtue retentive as physic maketh mention sometime for surfeit of meat and drink and sometime of villain's thoughts that been enclosed in man's mind one he goeth to sleep which may not be in without sin for which men most keepen them wisely for, or else may men sin in full grievously remedium contra peccatum luxury seventy seven now cometh the remedy against lechery and that is generally chastity and continence that restraineth all the disorderly movings that cometh of fleshly talents and ever the greater merit shall he had that most restraineth the wicked ischoffings of the order of this sin and this is in two manners that is to say chastity in marriage and chastity of widowhood now shalt thou understand 
that matrimony is lethal assembling of man and of woman that receiven by virtue of the sacrament the bond through which they may not be departed in all their life that is to say while that they live in both this as saith the book is a full great sacrament god making it as i have said in paradise and would himself be born in marriage and for to hall in marriage he was at a wedding whereas he turned water into wine which was the first miracle that he wrought in earth before these disciples true effect of marriage cleanseth fornication and replenisheth holy church of good lineage for that is the end of marriage and it changeth deadly sin into venial sin betwixt them that been he wedded and maketh the hearts all one of them that been he wedded as well as the bodies this is very marriage that was established by god ere that sin began one natural law was in his right point in paradise and it was ordained that one man should have but one woman and one woman but one man as saith saint augustine by many reasons seventy eight first for marriage is figured betwixt christ and holy church and that other is for man is heaved of a woman algate by ordinance it should be so for if a woman had more men than one then should she have more heavens than one and that were an horrible thing before god and eke a woman nay mixed not please too many folk at once and also there nay should never be peace nor rest amongst them for average would axon his owen thing and further over no man nay should know his owen engender nay who should have his heritage and the woman should been the last beloved for the time that she were conjoined to many men seventy nine now cometh how that a man should bear him with his wife and namely in two things that is to say in sufferance and reverence as showed christ one he made first woman for he nay made her not of the heaved of adam for she should not claim to great lordship for there as the woman hath the mastery she maketh too much disray there needn not in samples of this the experience of day by day ought suffice also certes god nay made not woman of the foot of adam for she nay should not been holden too low for she cannot patiently suffer but god made woman of the rib of adam for woman should be fellow unto man man should bear him to his wife in faith in truth and in love as saith st paul that a man should love in his wife as christ loved holy church that loved it so well that he died for it so should a man for his wife if it were need eighty now how that a woman should be subject to her husband that telleth saint peter first in obedience and eke as saith the decree a woman that is a wife as long as she is a wife she hath no authority to swear nay bear witness without leave of her husband that is her lord algate he should be so by reason she should eke serve in him in all honesty and be a temporary of her array i will well that they should set in her intent to please in her husbands but not by her quintus of array st jerome saith that wives that been apparelled in silk and in precious purple nay mo not clothen him in jesu christ what saith st john eke in this matter st gregory eke saith that no white seeketh precious array but only for vainglory to been honoured the more before in the people it is a great folly a woman to have a fair array outward and in herself be foul inward a wife should eke be measurable in looking and in bearing and in laughing and discreet in all her words and her deeds and above an all worldly thing she should love in her husband with all her heart and to him be true of her body so should an husband eke be to his wife for saith that all the body is the husband so should her heart been or else there is betwixt them two as in that no perfect marriage then shall men understand that for three things a man and his wife fleshly moan assembleth the first is intent of engender of children to the service of god 
for certus that is the cause final of matrimony and other causes to yield in average of them to other the debt of their bodies for neither of them hath power over his own body the third is for to eschew lechery and villainy the fourth is for sooth deadly sin as to the first it is meritory the second also for as saith the decree that she hath merit of chastity that yieldeth to her husband the debt of her body yea though it be against her liking and the lust of her heart the third manner is venial sin and truly scarcely may there any of these be without venial sin for the corruption and for the delight the fourth manner is for to understand if they assemble only for amorous love and for no one of the foresaid causes but for to accomplish their burning delight they wreck never how oft soothly it is steadily sin and yet with sorrow some folk will pain and hem more to doin than to their appetite sufficeth eighty one the second manner of chastity is for to be in a clean widow and eschew the embracings of man and desire the embracing of jesu christ these been though that han been wives and han foregone their husbands and eke women that han doin lechery and been relieved by penitence and certus if that a wife could keep in her all chaste by license of her husband so that she give never no one occasion that he a guilt it were to hire a great merit these manner women that observe in chastity must be clean in heart as well as in body and in thought and measurable in clothing and in countenance and be an abstinent in eating and drinking and speaking and in deed they been the vessel or the boist of the blessed magdalen that fulfilleth holy church of good odour the third manner of chastity is virginity it behoveth that she be holy in heart and clean of body then is she spouse of jesu christ and she is the life of angels she is the praising of this world and she is as these martyrs in egality she hath in her that tongue may not tell nay heart think virginity bear our lord jesu christ and virgin was himself eighty two another remedy against lechery is specially to withdraw in such things as give occasion to thick villainy as ease eating and drinking for certus wan the pot boileth strongly the beast remedy is to withdraw the fire sleeping long in great quiet is eke a great norris to lechery eighty three another remedy against lechery is that a man or woman eschew the company of them by which he doubteth to be tempted for albeit so that the deed is withstanden yet is there great temptation soothly a white wall although it nay burn not fully by striking of a candle yet is the wall black of the light full of time i read that no man trust in his own perfection but he be stronger than samson and holier than daniel and wiser than solomon eighty four now after that i declared you as i can the seven deadly sins and some of their branches and their remedies soothly if i could i would tell you the ten commandments but so high a doctrine i let to divines natheless i hope to god they've been touched in this treatise every each one of them all end of chapter forty six chapter forty seven of the canterbury tales by geoffrey chaucer this librivox recording is in the public domain the parson's tale part six de confessione eighty five now for as much as the second party of penitents stand in confession of mouth as i began in the first chapter i say saint augustine saith sin is every word and every deed and all that men coveten again the law of jesu christ and this is for to sin in heart in mouth and in deed by thy five wits that been sight hearing smelling tasting or savouring and feeling now is it good to understand that that aggregeth much o every sin thou shalt consider what thou art that doest the sin whether thou be male or female 
young or old gentle or thrall free or servant whole or sick wedded or single ordered or unordered wiser fool clerk or secular if she be of thy kindred bodily or ghostly or known if any of thy kindred have sinned with their or known and many mo thingus eighty six another circumstance is this whether it be doin in fornication or in avutri or known incest or known maiden or known in manner of homicide or known horrible great sins or small and how long thou hast continued in sin the third circumstance is the place there thou hast do sin whether in other men's house or in thine owen in field or in church or in church hall in church dedicate or known for if the church be hallowed and man or woman spill his kind in with that place by way of sin or by wicked temptation the church is introdicted till it be reconciled by the bishop and the priest that did such a villainy to term of all his life he should no more sing bass and if he did he should do in deadly sin at every time that he so song mass the fourth circumstance is by which mediators or by which messengers as for enticement or for consentment to bear company with fellowship from any a wreck for to bear company will go to the devil of hell wherefore they that egan or consent unto the sin being partners of the sin and of the damnation of the sinner the fifth circumstance is how many times that he hath sinned if it be in his mind and how oft that he hath fall for he that oft falleth in sin he despiseth the mercy of god and increaseth his sin and is unkind to christ and he waxeth the more feeble to withstand sin and sinneth the more lightly and the latter ariseth and is the more a shoe for to shrive in him namely to him that is his confessor for which that folk one they fall again in their old follies other they for letten their old confessors all outwardly or else they departen their shrift in divers places but soothly switch departed shrifts deserveth no mercy of god of his sins the sixth circumstance is why that a man sinneth as by which temptation and if himself procure filk temptation or by the exciting of other folk or if he sin with a woman by force or by her own consent or if the woman maugri her head have been a forest or no one this shall she tell for covetous or for poverty or if it was her procuring or no one and switch manner harnays the seven circumstances in what manner he hath doin his sin or how that she hath suffered that folk can do unto her and the same shall the man tell plainly with all circumstances and whether he hath sinned with common bordel women or no one or doin his sin in holy times or no one in fasting times or no one or before in his shrift or after his latter shrift and hath peradventure broken therefore his penance enjoined by whose help and whose counsel by sorcery or craft almost be told all these things after that they been great or small in region the conscience of man and eke the priest that is thy judge may the better been avised of his judgment in giving of thy penance that is after thy contrition for understand well that after time that a man hath defiled his baptism by sin if he will come to salvation there is no one other way but by penitence and drift and satisfaction and namely by the two if there be a confessor to which he may shrive in him and the third if he have life to perform in it eighty seven then shall man look and consider that if he will make an a true and a profitable confession there most be four conditions first it must be in sorrowful bitterness of heart as said the king ezekias to god i will remember me all the years of my life in bitterness of mine heart this condition of bitterness hath five signs the first is that confession must be shamefast not for to cover nay hide his sin for he hath a guilt his god and defiled his soul and hereof saith saint augustine the heart travaileth for shame of his sin 
and for he hath great shamefastness he is dying to have great mercy of god such was the confession of the publican that would not heaven up his eye unto heaven for he had offended god of heaven for which shamefastness he had anon the mercy of god and thereof saith saint augustine that switch shamefast folk been next forgiveness and remission another sign is humility in confession of which saith saint peter humbleth you under the might of god the hand of god is mighty in confession for that by god forgiveth thee thy sins for he alone hath the power and this humility shall be in, in heart and in sign outward for right as he hath humility to god in his heart right so should he humble his body outward to the priest that sit in god's place for which in no manner sith that christ the sovereign and the priest men and mediator betwixt christ and the sinner and the sinner is the last by way of reason then should not the sinner sit as high as his confessor but kneel before him or at his feet but if malady disturb it for he shall not take and keep who sit there but in whose place that he sitteth a man that hath trespassed to a lord and cometh forth to ax mercy and make in his accord and set him down anon by the lord men would hold in him outrageous and not worthy so soon for to have remission nay mercy the third sign is how that thy shrift should be full of tears if man may and if man may not weep with his bodily iron let him weep in heart such was the confession of st peter for after that he had forsaken jesu christ he went out and wept full bitterly the fourth sign is that he nay let not for shame to show in his confession switch was the confession of the magdalen that may spared for no shame of him that were in at feast for to go to our lord jesu christ and be known to him their sins the fifth sign is that a man or a woman be obeisant to receive in the penance that him is enjoined for his sins for certes jesu christ for the guilts of a man was obedient to the death eighty eight the second condition in a very confession is that it be hastily done for certes if a man had a deadly wound ever the longer that he tarried to warish himself the more would it corrupt and haste him to his death and eke the wound would be the worse for to heal and right so fareth sin that long time is in a man unshewed certes a man ought hastily showing his sins for many causes as for dread of death that cometh oft suddenly and is in no certain what time it shall be nay in what place and eke the dredging of one sin draweth in another and eke the longer that he tarrieth the further he is from christ and if he abide to his last day scarcely may he shrive in him or remember him of his sins or repent in him for the grievous melody of his death and for as much as he nay hath not in his life hearkened jesu christ one he hath spoken he shall cry to jesu christ at his last day and scarcely will he hearken him and understand that this condition must hand four things thy shrift most be purveyed before and devised for wicked haste doth no profit and that a man con shrive him of his sins be it of pride or of envy and so forth of the species and circumstances and that he have comprehended in his mind the number and the greatness of his sins and how long that he hath lain in sin and eke that he be contrit of his sins and in steadfast purpose by the grace of god never f to fall in sin and eke that he dread and counterweight himself that he flee the occasions of sin to which he is inclined also thou shalt shrive thee of all thy sins to one man and not a parcel to one man and a parcel to another that is to understand in intent to depart thy confession as for shame or dread for it is nis but strangling of thy soul for certes jesu christ is entirely all good in him nis no one imperfection and therefore other he forgiveth all parfully or never a deal i say not that if thou be assigned to the penitence for certain sin that thou art bound to show in him all the remnant of thy sins of which thou hast be shriven to thy curate but if it like to thee of thine humility this is no departing of shrift nay i say not there as i speak of division of confession that if thou have license for to shrive thee to a discreet and an honest priest where thee liketh and by license of thy curate that thou nay mayest well shrive thee to him of all thy sins but let no blot be behind let no sin be untold 
as far as thou hast remembrance and one thou shalt be shriven to thy curate till and eke all the sins that thou hast through and sin thou were last eve shriven this is no wicked intent of division of shrift eighty nine also the very shrift axeth certain conditions first that thou shrive thee by the free will not constrained nay for shame of folk nay for malady nay such things for it is reason that he that trespasseth by his free will that by his free will he confess his trespass and that no one other man tell his sin but he himself nay he shall not nate nay deny his sin nay wrath him again the priest for his admonishing to leave sin the second condition is that thy shrift be lawful that is to say that thou that drivest thee and eke the priest that heareth thy confession been verily in the faith of holy church and that a man may be not despaired of the mercy of jesu christ as cain or judas and eke a man must accuse in himself of his own trespass and not another but he shall blame and whiten himself and his own malice of his sin and none other but natheless if that another man be occasion or enticer of his sin or the estate of a person be such through which his sin is egregious or else that he may not plainly shrive in him but he tell the person with which he hath sinned then may he tell so that his intent not be not to backbite the person but only to declare in his confession ninety thou nay shall not eke make no blessings in thy confession for humility per aventure to sain that thou hast do in sins of which that thou were never guilty for saint augustine saith if thou by cause of thine humility makest blessings on thyself though thou nay were not in sin before yet art thou then in sin through thy lessings thou must eke show thy sin by thine own proper mouth but thou be wexed dumb and not by no letter for thou hast done the sin thou shalt have the shame therefore thou shalt not eke paint thy confession by fair subtle words to cover the more thy sin for then bigar lest thou thyself and not the priest thou must tell in it plainly be it never so foul nay so horrible thou shalt eke shrive thee to a priest that is discreet to counsel thee and eke thou shalt not shrive thee for vain glory nay for hypocrisy nay for no cause but only for the doubt of jesu christ and the heel of thy soul thou shalt not eke rend to the priest suddenly to tell in him lightly thy sin is who so telleth a jape or a tale but advisedly and with great devotion and generally shrive thee oft if thou oft fall oft thou arise by confession and though thou shrive thee ofter than once of sin of which thou hast be shriven it is the more merit and as saith saint augustine thou shalt have the more lightly releasing and grace of god both of sin and of pain and certes once a year at least way it is lawful for to be in hauser for certes once a year all things were no vellum explicit secunda pars penitentiae et sequitur turcia pars eustem de satifactione ninety one now have i told you a very confession that is the second party of penitence the third party of penitence is satisfaction and that stanth most generally in almus and in bodily pain now been there three manner of almuses contrition of heart where a man offereth himself to god another is to hand pity of default of his neighbours and the third is in giving of good counsel ghostly and bodily where men had need and namely in sustenance of man's food and take keep that a man hath need of these things generally he hath need of food he hath need of clothing and herbolo he hath need of charitable counsel and visiting in prison and in malady and sepulture of his dead body and if thou mayest not visit the needful with thy person visit him by thy message and by thy gifts these been generally almuses or works of charity of him that han temporal riches or discretion in counselling of these works shalt thou hear him at the day of doom ninety two these almuses shalt thou do in of thine own proper things and hastily and privily if thou mayest but natheless if thou mayest not do in it privily thou shalt not forbear to do in almus though men seen it so that it be not doing for thank of the world but only for thank of jesu christ for as witnesseth saint matthew capitulo quinto a city may not been hid that is set on a mountain nay men light not a lantern but put it under a bushel 
the men set it on a candlestick to give light to the men in the house right so shall your light lighten before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father that is in heaven ninety three now as to speak him of bodily pain it stand in prayers in wakings and fastings and virtuous teachings of horizons and ye shall understand that horizons or prayers is for to sing a pious will of heart that redresseth it in god and expresseth it by word outward to remove and harms and to hand things as spiritual and durable and sometime temporal things of which horizons certus in the horizon of the pattern noster hath jesu christ enclosed most things certus it is privileged of three things in his dignity for which it is more dine than any other prayer for that jesu christ himself maketh it, it and it is short for it should be cold and more lightly and for to withhold in it the more easily in heart and open himself the ofter with the horizon and for a man should be the last weary to say in it and for a man may not excuse in him to learn it it is so short and so easy and for it comprehendeth in itself all good prayers the exposition of this holy prayer that is so excellent and dying i betake to these masters of theology save thus much a wool i sing that when thou prayest that god should forgive thee thy guilts as thou forgivest him that a guilt unto thee be full well ware that thou be not out of charity this holy horizon amenuseth eke venial sin and therefore it appurteneth especially to penitence ninety four this prayer most be truly said and in very faith and that men pray to god ordinately and discreetly and devoutly and always a man shall put in his will to be subject to the will of god this horizon most eke been said with great humbleness and full pure honestly and not to the annoyance of any man or woman it must be been continued with the works of charity it availeth eke again the vices of the soul for as saith st jerome by fasting been saved the vices of the flesh and by prayer the vices of the soul ninety five after this thou shalt understand that bodily pain stant in waking for jesu christ saith waketh and prayeth that ye nay enter in wicked temptation ye shall understand in also that fasting stant in three things in forbearing of bodily meat and drink and in forbearing of worldly jollity and in forbearing of deadly sin this is to saying that a man shall keep in him from deadly sin with all his might ninety six and thou shalt understand in eke that god ordained fasting and to fasting appertenant four things largeness to poor folk gladness of heart is spiritual not to have been angry nay annoyed nay grouch for he fasteth and also reasonable hour for to eat by measure that is for to sane a man shall not eat in untime nay sit the longer at his table to eat for he fasteth ninety seven then shalt thou understand that bodily pain stant in discipline or teaching by word or by writing or in ensample also in wearing of hairs or of stamen or of halberdins on their naked flesh for christ's sake and such manner penances but wear thee well that such manner penances of thy flesh may make not thine heart bitter or angry or annoyed of thyself for better is to cast away thine hair than for to cast away the sickerness of jesu christ and therefore saith st paul clothe you as they that been chosen of god in heart of misericord debonairity sufferance and such manner of clothing of which jesu christ is more paid than of hares or hauberkins or hauberkas ninety eight then is discipline eke in knocking of thy breast in scourging with yards in kneelings in tribulations in suffering patiently wrongs that been doing to thee and eke in patient sufferance of maladies or lessing of worldly cattle or of wife or of child or other friends ninety nine then shalt thou understand which things disturb in penance and this is in four manners that is dread shame hope and one hope that is desperation and for to speak first of dread for which he weneth that he may suffer no penance there agains his remedy for to think that bodily penance is but short and little at regard of the pain of hell that is so cruel and so long that it lasteth without an end one hundred now again the shame that a man hath to shrive in him and namely these hypocrites that wilden been holden so parfit that they had no need to shrive in him against 
that shame should a man think that by way of reason that he that hath not been ashamed to do in foul things certes him ought not been ashamed to do fair things and that is confessions a man should eke think that god seeth and will all his thoughts and all his works to him may no thing been hid nay covered men should him eke remember him of the shame that is to come at the day of doom to him that been not penitent and shriven in this present life for all the creatures in earth and in hell shall in seen apertly all that they hiden in this world one hundred and one now for to speaking of the hope of them that been negligent and slow to shrive in them that stand in two manners that one is that he hopeth for to live long and for to purchase in much richness for his delight and then he will shrive in him and as he saith him seemeth then timely enough to come to shrift another is sir quidri that he hath in christ's mercy against the first vice he shall think that our life is in no sickerness and eke that all the richness in this world been in a venture and passing as a shadow on the wall and as saith saint gregory that it appurteneth to the great right wiseness of god that never shall the pain stint of him that never wold withdrawn him from sin there thanks but i continue in sin for thil perpetual will to do sin shall they hand perpetual pain one hundred and two one hope is in two manners the first one hope is in the mercy of christ that other is that they thinken that they nay might not long persevere in goodness the first one hope cometh of that he deemeth that he hath sinned so greatly and so oft and so long lain in sin that he shall not be saved certus against that cursed one hope should he think that the passion of jesu christ is more strong for to unbind than sin is strong for to bind against the second one hope he shall think that as oft as he falleth he may arise again by penitence and though he never so long have lain in sin the mercy of christ is always ready to receive in him to mercy against the one hope that he deemeth that he should not long persevere in goodness he shall think that the feebleness of the devil may nothing doin but if men will suffer him and eke he shall have strength of the help of god and of all holy church and of the protection of angels if him list one hundred and three then shall men understand what is the fruit of penance and after the word of jesu christ it is the endless bliss of heaven their joy hath no contrary esti of woe nay grievance there all harms been passed of this present life there as is the sickerness from the pain of hell there as is the blissful company that rejoice in him ever mo ever rich of others joy there as the body of man that alone was foul and dark is no more clear than the sun there as the body that alone was sick frail and feeble and mortal is immortal and so strong and so whole that there may nothing appear in it there is nay is neither hunger thirst nay cold but every soul replenished with the sight of the perfect knowing of god this blissful reign may men purchase by poverty is spiritual and the glory by lowliness the plenty of joy by hunger and thirst and the rest by travail and the life by death and mortification of sin here taketh the maker of this book his leave one hundred and four now pray i to him all that hearken this little treatise or read that if there be anything in it that liketh them that there of they thanken our lord jesu christ of whom proceedeth all wit and all goodness and if there be anything that displease them i pray him also that they are it to the default of mine uncunning and not to my will that would full fain have said better if i had had cunning for our book saith all that is written is written for our doctrine and that is mine intent wherefore i beseech you meekly for the mercy of god that ye pray for me that christ have mercy on me and forgive me my guilts and namely of my translations and indictings of worldly vanities the which i revoke in my retractions as is the book of troilus the book also of fame the book of the nineteen ladies the book of the duchess the book of st valentine's day of the parliament of birds the tales of canterbury thilk that sounded into sin the book of the lion and many another book if they were in my remembrance and many a song and many a lecherous lay that christ for his great mercy forgive me the sin but of the translation of boise de consolazione 
and other books of legends of saints and homilies and morality and devotion that think our lord jesu christ and his blissful mutter and all the saints of heaven beseeking him that they from henceforth unto my lives end send me grace to bewail my guilts and to study to the salvation of my soul and grant me grace of very penitence confession and satisfaction to do in, in this present life through the benign grace of him that is king of kings and priest over all priests that bought us with the precious blood of his heart so that i may be in one of them at the day of doom that shall be saved qui cum patre etc here is ended the book of the tales of canterbury compiled by geoffrey chaucer of whose soul jesu christ have mercy amen End of chapter 47chapter forty eight of the canterbury tales by geoffrey chaucer this librivox recording is in the public domain appendix to group a the tale of gamelin part one liveth and lesteneth and hearkeneth the right and you shall hear a talking of a doughty knight sir johann of boundis was his rich name he cowed of nurture enough and mulchel of game three sons the knight had that with his body he wan the eldest was a much shrew and son he began his brethren loved well their father and of him were aghast the eldest deserved his father's curse and had it at the last the good knight his father lived so your that death was coming him to and handled him full sore the good knight cared sore sick there he lay how his children should living after his day he had been wide where but none husband he was all the land that he had it was very perchus fain he would it were dressed among them all that each of them had his part as it might have fall though sent he into country after wise uh, nights to help dealin his lands and dressin him to rights he sent them word by letters they showed him high blithe if they would speak with him while he was on live though the knights herden sick that he lay had they no rest neither night nor day till they come unto him there he lay still on his deathbed to abide god's will then said the good knight sick there he lay lords i you warn forsooth without nay i may no longer live in here in this stound for through god's will death draweth me to ground there nas none of them all that heard him aright that they ne hadn ruth of that ilka knight and said sir for god's love nay dismay you not god may do but of bale that is now he wrought then spake the good knight sick there he lay boot of bale god may send i wot it is no nay but i beseech you knights for the love of me goeth and dresseth my land among my sonnes three and sires for the love of god dealeth them not amiss and forgetteth not gamelin my young son that is taketh he to that on as well as to that other selde ye see ony heir helpen his brother though leet they the night lion that was not in eel and went in into council his lawns for to deal for to deal in them all to one that was her thought and for gamelin was youngest he should have naught all the long that there was 
they doth in it into and leaden gamelin the young without landagu and each of them said to other full loud his brethren might give him land when he good cowed when they had dealed the land at their will they come again to the night there he lay full still and told in him anon right how they hadn't wrought and the night there he lay like it it right naught then said the knight by saint mar time for all that ye have ye doin yet is the lawn mine for god's love neighbours standeth all still and i will deal my land right after my will johan mine eldest son shall have ploughs five that was my father's heritage while he was on live and my middlest son five ploughs of land that i help for to get with my right hand and all mine other purchase of lawns and leads that i bequeath gamelin and all my good steeds and i beseech you good men that law con of land for gamelin's love that my quest does stand thus dealt the knight his lawn by his day right on his deathbed sick there he lay and soon afterward he lay stone still and died when time come as it was christ's will and anon as he was dead another grass agreed son the elder brother child the younger knave he took into his hun his lawn and his lead and gamelin himself to clothe him and to feed he clothed him and fed him evil and he cloth and lead his lawns for fair and his houses both his parks and his woods and deed nothing well and suthen he it abought on his fair raphael so long was gamelin in his brother's hall for the strongest of good will they doubted in him all there was none therein neither young nor old that would wraith gamelin were he never so bold gamelin stood in a day in his brother's yard and began with his son to handle in his beard he thought on his lawns but lay in unsaw and his fair oaks that down were he draw his parks were he broken and his deer bereaved of all his good steeds none was him believed his houses were unhiled and full evil dight though thought gamelin it went not aright afterwards came his brother walking there and said to gamelin is our meat yer though wraithed him gamelin and swore by god's book thou shalt go bake thyself i will not be thy cook how brother gamelin how answerest thou now thou spake never such a word as thou dost now by my faith said gamelin now me thinketh need of all the harms that i have i took never are he my park's been to broken and my dear bereaved of mine armier and my steeds not as me believed all that my father me bequeathed all goeth to shame and therefore have thou god's curse brother by thy name then bespeck his brother that rape was of rees stand still gadling and hold right thy peace thou shalt be fain for to have thy meat and thy weed what speakest thou gamelin of lond other of lead then said gamelin the child that that was ying christ's curse must he have that clepeth me gadling i'm no worse gadling nay no worse white but born of a lady and given of a knight nay durst he not to gamelin ne'er a foot to go but clepeth to him his men and said to him though go with him beateth this boy and reaveth him his wit and let him learn another time to answer me bet then said the child young gamelin christ's curse must thou have brother art thou men and if i shall all gate be beaten anon christ's curse must thou have but thou be that one and anon his brother in that great heat made his men to fetter staves gamelin to beat one that each of them a staff had he known gamelin was where anon though he say him come though gamelin say him come he looked over all and was where of a pestle stood under a wall gamelin was light of foot and thither can he leap and draw all his brother's men right on an heap 
he looked as a wild lion and laid on good wound though his brother say that he began to goon he fly up until a loft and shut the door fast thus gamelin with the pestle made him all aghast some for gamelin's love and some for his eye all they drove by halves though he gan to ply what how now said gamelin evil must ye thee will ye begin contact and so sun flee gamelin sought his brother whither he was flow and saw where he looked out at a window brother said gamelin come a little near and i will teach thee a play at a bocalier his brother him answered and swore by saint richer while the pestle is in then haunt i will come no near brother i will make thy peace i swear by christ's oar cast away the pestle and wrath thee no more i must need said gamelin wrath me at once for thou would make thy men to break mine bones nay had i main and might in mine arms to have thee put them from me they would have do me harms gamelin said his brother be thou not wroth for to seeing thee have harm it were me right loth i nay did it not brother but for a fonding for to look in if thou were strong and art so ying come my doom then to me and grant me my bone a thing i will thee ask and we shall sought soon down that came his brother that fickle was and fell and was swift sore aghast of the pastel he said brother gamelin ask me thy boon and look thou me blame but i grant it soon then said gamelin brother ye wis and we shall been at one thou must me grant this all that my father me bequeath while he was on life thou must do me it have if we shall not strive that shalt thou have gamelin i swear by christ sore all that thy father thee bequeath though thou wouldst have more thy lawn that life lay for well it shall be so and thine houses raised up that been laid so low thus said the knight to gamelin with mouth and thought eke of falseness as he well couth the knight thought on treason and gamelin on knowing and went and kissed his brother and won they were at one alas young gamelin nothing he nay wist with which a false treason his brother him kissed lith lithus and lustness and holdeth your tongue and ye shall hear talking of gamelin the young there was there beside him cried a wrastling and therefore there was set up a ram and a ring and gamelin was in good will to wend thereto for to prove in his might what he could do brother said gamelin by saint richer thou must lean me to-night a little coarser that is fresh to the spore on forward to ride i must on an errand a little hair beside by god said his brother of steeds in my stall go and choose thee the best and spare none of all of steeds or of courses that stand on him beside and tell me good brother whither thou wilt ride here beside brother is cried a wrastling and therefore shall be set up a ram and a ring much worship it were brother to us all might i the ram and the ring bring home to this hall a steed there was saddled smartly and skeet gamelin did a pair spores fast on his feet he set his foot in the stirrup the steed he bestrewed and toward the wrastling the young child rode though gamelin the young was right out at the gat the false knight his brother look at it after that and besought jesu christ that is heaven king he might break his neck in that wrestling as soon as gamelin come there the place was he light down of his steed and stood on the grass and there he heard a franklin way low way sing and began bitterly his hans for to ring good man said gamelin why makes thou this fair is there no man that may you help out of this care alas said this franklin that ever was i bore for to stalworth sons i ween that i have lore a champion is in the place that hath he wrought me sorrow for he hath slain my two sons but if god him borrow i would give ten pound by jesus christ and more with the nons i and a man to handling him sore 
good man said gamelin wilt thou well doin hold mine horse while my man goeth of my shoein and don't my man to keep my clothes and my steed and i will into place go to look if i may speed by god said the franklin anon it shall be doin i will myself be thy man and rowan of thy shoein and when thou into the place jesu christ thee speed and read not of thy clothes nor of thy good steed barefoot and ungirt gamelin in came all that were in, in the place heed of him they name how he durst onter him of him to do in his might that was so doughty champion in wrestling and in fight up start the champion rapely and anon toward young gamelin he began to go on and said who is thy father and who is thy sire forsooth thou art a great fool that thou come higher gamelin answered the champion though thou knew by my father well he could go whilst he was on live by saint martin sir johan of boundis was his name and i gamelin fellow said the champion also must i thrive i knew well thy father while he was on live and thyself gamelin i will that thou it hear while thou were a young boy a much shrew thou weir then said gamelin and swore by christ sore now i am older watts thou shalt me find a more by god said the champion welcome must thou be come thou once in my hand shalt thou never thee it was well within the night and the moon shone one gamelin and the champion together gone gone the champion cast torns to gamelin that was pressed and gamelin stood still and bade him do in his best then said gamelin to the champion thou art fast about to bring me a doom now i have thee proved many torns of thine thou must he said proven on or two of mine gamelin to the champion ged smartly anon of all the torns that he couth he showed him but one and cast him on the left side that three ribs to break and there to his one arm that gave a great crack then said gamelin smartly a moon shall it be hold for a cast or else for noon by god said the champion whether that it be he that cometh once in thin hand shall he never thee then said the franklin that had his sons there blessed be thou gamelin that ever thou bore where the franklin said to the champion of him stood him nim i this is young gamelin that taught thee this ply again answered the champion that liketh nothing well he is a lither maester and his play is right fell sith i wrestle first it is ego full your but i was never in my life handled so sore gamelin stood in the place alone without cirque and said if there be any mo let him come to work the champion that pained him to work so sore it seemeth by his countenance that he will no more gamelin in the place stood as still as stone for to abide wrestling but there come noon there was no one with gamelin would wrestle more for he handled the champion so wonderly sore two gentlemen there were that he made the place coming to gamelin god give him good grace and said to him do on thine hosen and thy shoon for sooth at this time this fair is he doon and then said gamelin so must i well fare i've not yet haven dell sold up my ware though said the champion so broke i my swear he is a fool that thereof buyeth thou sellest it so dear though said the franklin that was in much care fellow he said why lackest thou his ware by saint jane in gallus that many man hast sought yet it is too good cheap that thou hast e bought though that wardens were of that wrestling come and brought gamelin the ram in the ring and sudden have gamelin the ring in the ram for the best wrestler that ever here came thus won gamelin the ram in the ring and went with much joy home in the morning his brother saith where he came with a great rout and bade shut the gate and hold him without the porter of his lord was full sore aghast and started on to the gate and locked it fast now vetheth and lesteneth both young and old and ye shall hear gammon of gamelin the bold gamelin come thereto for to have come in and then was it he shut fast with a pin then said gamelin porter undo the gate for many good man's son standeth there at then answered the porter and swore by god's beard thou now shalt gamelin come inside this yard 
thou look'st said a camelin so broke i my chin he mopped the wicket with his foot and break away the pin the porter say hello though it might no better be he set his foot on earth and began to flee by my faith said gamelin thy travail is he lore for i am a foot as light as thou though thou hadst swore gamelin overtook the porter and his teen rack and girt him in the neck that the bond to brack and took him by that one arm and threw him in a well seven fatman it was deep as i have heard tell when gamelin the young thus had played his play all that in the yard were drew in him away they dreaded him full sore for workers that he wrought and for the fair company that he thither brought gamelin to the gate and let it up wide he let in all manner men that goin and wold to ride and said ye be welcome without any greed for we will be masters here and ask no man leave yesterday i left said young gamelin in my brother cellar five ton of wind i will not but this company pardon a twin and ye will do an after me while any soap is thrin and if my brother grouch or make foul cheer other for spence or meat or drink that we spend in here i am our cater and bear our all our purse he shall have for his gretchen saint mary's curse my brother is a nigoon i swear by christ's or and we will spend largely that he hath spared your and do that maketh gretchen that we here dwell he shall to the porter into the draw well seven days and seven nights gammon held his feast with much mirth and solace that was there and no chest in a little turret his brother lay east deek and say him wasting is good but durst he not speak early on a morning on the a to day the jests come to gamelin and will gone here away lords said gamelin will ye so high all the wine is not yet drunk so broke i mine eye gamelin in his heart was he full woe one his guests took their leave from him for to go he would they had longer abide and they said nay but betaught gamelin god and good day thus made gamelin his feast and brought it well to end and after his guests took leave to wend the thus and lusteneth and holdeth your tongue and ye shall hear gammon of gammon the young hearkeneth lordings and lusteneth aright when all guests were gone how gammon was dight all the while that gammon held his managerie his brother fought on him be reek with his treachery though gammon's guests were riding a goon gammon stood alone friends had he known though after a full soon within a little stound gamelin was he taken and full hard he bound forth come the false knight out of the solier to gamelin his brother he yeed full near and said to gamelin who made thee so bold for to story my store of mine household brother said gamelin wrath thee right naught for it is many day agone sithen it was bought for brother thou hast he had by saint richard of fifteen ploughs of land this sixteen year and of all the beasts thou hast forth bred that my father me bequeath on his deathbed of all this sixteen year i give thee the prow for the meat and the drink that we have spended now then said the false knight evil must he thee hark me brother gammon what i will give thee for of my body brother there gitten have i none i will make thee mine heir i swear by st john par my foy said gamelin and if it so be and thou think as thou says god yielded thee nothing wist gamelin of his brother's guile therefore he him beguiled in a little while gamelin said he one thing i thee tell though thou threw my porter in the draw well i swore in that wrath and in that great but that thou shouldest be bound both hand and foot therefore i thee beseech brother gamelin let me not be forsworn brother art thou mine let me bind thee now both hand and feet for to hold mine a vow as i thee beheat brother said gamelin also must i thee thou shalt not be forsworn for the love of me though made thee gamelin to sit 
might he not stand till they had him bound both foot and hand the false knight his brother of camlin was aghast and sent after fetus to fetter on him fast his brother made lessings on him there he stood and told him that coming in that gamelin was wood gamelin stood to a post bounden in the hall though that coming in there looked on him all ever stood gamelin even upright but meat nay drink had he none neither day nor night then said gamelin brother by mine halls now i have espied that thou art a party false had i wist that treason that thou hadst he found i would have give thee strokes or i had be bound gamelin stood bounden still as any stone two days and two nights meat had he none then said gamelin that stood he bound strong adam spencer me thinketh i fast too long adam spencer now i beseech of thee for the much o love my father love thee if thou may come to the keys lease me out of bond and i will part with thee of my free land then said adam that was the spencer i have served thy brother this sixteen year if i let thee go in out of this bower he will say afterward i were a tray tower adam said gamelin so broke i mine hoss thou shalt find my brother at last false therefore brother adam loose me out of bond and i will part with thee of my free land of such a forward said adam he wis i will do thereto all that in me is adam said gamelin also mud i thee i will hold thee covenant and thou will me anon as adam's lord to bed was he gone adam took the keys and leaped gamelin out anon he unlocked gamelin both hands and feet in hope of advancement that he him beheep then said gamelin thank be god's son now i am loosed both foot and hand had i now eaten and drunken aright there is no one in this house should bind me this night adam took gamelin as still as any stone and led him into spence rapely and anon and set him to supper right in a privy stead he bade him do gladly and gamelin so dead anon as gamelin had eaten well and fine and thereto he drunk well of the redder wine adam said gamelin what is now thy reed where i go to my brother and gird of his heed gamelin said adam it shall not be so i can teach thee a reed that is worth the twa i would well forsooth that this is no nay we shall have a mangery right on sunday abbots and priors many here shall be and other men of holy church as i tell of thee thou shalt stand up by the post as thou were hand fast and i shall leave him unlook away thou may him cast one that they have eaten and washen their hands thou shalt beseech them all to bring thee out of bounds and if they will borrow thee that were good gain then were thou out of prison and i out of blame and if each of them say unto us nay i shall do another i swear by this day thou shalt have a good staff and i will have another and christ's curse have that one that faileth that other ye for god said gamelin i say it for me if i fail on my side evil must i thee if we shall all gape a soil him of hearse their sin warn me brother adam when i shall begin gamelin said adam by saint charity i will warn thee before one that it shall be when i think on thee look for goon and cast away the fetters and come to me anew adam said gamelin blessed be thy bones that is a good counsel given for the knowns if they were me then to bring out of bends i will set good strokes right on here lens though the sunday was he come and folk to the feast fair they were welcome both lust and meast and ever at hall door as they coming in they cast their eye on young gamelin the false knight his brother full of treachery all the guests that there were at a mangerie of gamelin his brother he told them with mouth all the harm and the shame that he'd tell a calf though they were served of messes two or three then said gamelin how serve ye me it is not well served by god that all made that i sit fasting and other men make glade the false knight his brother there that he stood told all his guests that gamelin was wood 
and gamelin stood still and answered naught but adam's words he held in his thought though gamelin can speak dolefully withal to the great lords that sat in the hall lords he said for christ's passion helpeth bring gamelin out of prison then said an abbot sorrow on his cheek he shall have christ's curse and saint mary's eke that thee out of prison beggeth other borrow but ever worth them all that doth thee much sorrow after that abbot then spake another i would then heed were of though thou were my brother all that thee borrow foul must them fall thus they said all that were in the hall then said a prior evil must he thrive it is much scathe boy that thou art on live owl said gamelin so broke i my bone now i have espied that friends have i none cursed mot he worth both flesh and blood that ever do prior or abbot any good adam the spencer took up the cloth and looked on gamelin and say that he was wroth adam on the pantry little he thought but two good staves to hall door he brought adam looked on gamelin and he, he was ware a noon and cast away the fetters and he began to goon though he came to adam he took that one staff and began to worch and good strokes gaff gamelin came in to hall and the spencer both and looked them about as they had be wroth gamelin springeth holy water with an oaken spire that some that stood up were fallen in the fire there was no lewd man that in the hall stood that would do gamelin anything but good but stood beside him and let them both worch for they had no ruth of men of holy church abbot or prior monk or canon that gamelin overtook anon they yeeden down there was none of them all that with his staff met that he had nay made him overthrow and quit him his death gamelin said adam for saint charity pay large livery for the love of me and i will keep the door so ever here i mass ere they been assoiled there shall no one pass doubt thee not said gamelin while we've been in fear keep thou well the door and i will work you here steer thee good adam and let there none flee and we shall tell largely how many that there be gamelin said adam do him but good they've been men of holy church draw of them no blood save well the crown and do them none harms but break both their legs and sit them here arms thus gamelin and adam wrought right fast and played him with the monks and made them aghast thither they come riding jollily with swains and um i and they were elad in carts and in wains though they hadn't all he done done said a grave frere alas sire abbot what did we now hear that the though that we come and hitter it was a cold reed of us had been better at home and with water and with breed while gamelin made orders of monks and friar ever stood his brother and made full cheer gamelin up with his staff that he well knew and girt him in the neck that he overthrew a little above the girdle the rig bond to barst and set him in the fretters there he sat arst sit there brother said gamelin for to call him thy blood as i did mine as swift as they had he broken him on hair foon they asked it water and wishin anoon what some for here love and some for here awe all the servants served them of the best law that chever was thens but a five mile and all was he told him in a little while how gamelin and adam had doin a sorry reese bound in in a wounded men i in the king's peace though began some strife for to wake and the sheriff was about gamely for to take End of chapter 48chapter forty nine of the canterbury tales by geoffrey chaucer this librivox recording is in the public domain the tale of gamelin part two now liveth and lusteneth so god give you good fine and ye shall hear good gain of young gamelin four and twenty young men that held of them full bold come to the sheriff and said that they wold gamelin and adam fetten by her fay the sheriff gave them leave sooth as i you say they hiden fast wold they not belin till they come to the gate there 
gamelin was in they knocked on the gate the porter was nigh and looked out at an hole as man that was sly the porter had behold him a little while he loved well gamelin and was a drad of guile and leet the wicked standen he steek full still and asked him without what was here will for all the great company then spake but one undo the gate porter and let us in gun then said the porter so broke i my chin ye shall say your errand ere ye comin in say to gamelin and adam if here will be we will speak with them words two or three fellow said the porter stand there still and i will win to gamelin to witten his will in went the porter to gamelin anoon and said sir i warn you ere been come your foon the sheriff's men been at the gate for to take you both sure ye not scape porter said gamelin so mut i well thee i will allow thee thy words when i my time see go again to the gate and dwell with them a while and thou shalt see right soon porter a guile adam said a gamelin look thee to goon we have foe men at gate and friends never moon it been the sheriff's men that hither been e come they been swore to get her that we shall be numb gamelin said adam hide thee right blithe and if i fail thee this day evil must i thrive and we shall so welcome the sheriff's men that some of them shall make here beds in the fen at postern gate gamelin out went and a good cart staff in his hand he hent adam hent soon another great staff for to help gamelin and good strokes gaff adam fell twain and gamelin fell three the other setten feet on earth and begun a flee what said adam so ever here i mass i have a draught of good wine drink ere ye pass nay by god said they thy drink is not good it would make man's brain to lie in his hood gamelin stood still and looked at him about and see the sheriff come with a great rout adam said gamelin would be now thy reeds here cometh the sheriff and will have cure heeds adam said gamelin my reed is now this abide we no longer lest we fare amiss i read that we too would goen ere that we be found better is us there loose than in town e bound adam took by the hand younger gamelin and everich of them two drank a draught of wine and after took her course and went in her way though fond the sheriff nest but none a the sheriff lighted dune and went into the hall and found the lord he fettered fast withal the sheriff unfettered him son and that anoon and sent after a leech to heal his rigor boon let we now this false knife lie in his care and talk we of gamelin and look how he fare gamelin enter the wood stalk it still and adam the spencer like it full ill adam swore to gamelin by saint richer now i see it is merry to be a spencer that lever me were keys for to bear than walking in this wild wood my clothes to tear adam said gamelin dismay thee right naught many good man's child is in care is he brought and as they stood talking bothen in fear adam heard talking of men and nay him thought they were though gamelin under the wood looked aright seven score of young men he sought well a dight all sat at meat in compass about adam said gamelin now have we no doubt after bale cometh boot through grace of good almighty methinketh of meat and drink that i have a sight adam looked though under wood bough and one he say me he was glad e now for he hoped to god for to have his deal and he was sore alarmed after a good meal 
as he said that word the master outlaw saw gamelin and adam underwood shaw young men said the master by the good rood i'm ware of jess god send us none but good yonder been two young men wonder well a dight and peradventure there been mo who so looked aright ariseth up ye young men and fetteth them to me it is good that we whiten what men they be up there startin seven from the dinner and metten with gamelin and adam spencer wan they were nay them then said that one yieldeth up young men your bows and your flan then said gamelin that young was of eld much sorrow must he have that to you him yield i curse none other but right myself that ye fet to you five than ye be twelve though they heard by his word that might was in his arm there was none of them all that would do him harm but said unto gamelin mildly and still come afore our master and say to him thy will young men said gamelin by your lute what man is your master that ye with be all they answered without blessing our master is he crowned of outlaws king adam said gamelin go we in christ's name he may neither meat nor drink warn us for shame if that he be hend and come of gentle blood he will give us meat and drink and do in us some good by saint jane said adam what harm that i get i will utter to the door that i had a met gamelin and adam went forth in fear and they greet the master that they found there then said the master king of outlaws what seek ye young men under wood shaws gamelin answered the king with his crown he most needs walk in wood that may not walk in town sire we walk not here no harm for to do but if we meet with a deer to shoot there too as men that been hungry and mow no meat find and been hard bestayed under wood lined of gamelin's words the master had ruth had said ye shall have enough have god my truth he bade him sit there a doom for to take rest and bade him eat and drink and that of the best as they set and eaten and drank well and fine then said the one to the other this is gamelin though was the master outlaw into council numb and told how it was gamelin that hither was he come anon as he heard how it was befall he made him master under him over them all within the third wike him come tiding to the master outlaw that there was her king that he should come home his peace was he made and of that good tiding he was though full glad though said he to his young men sooth for to tell me been common tidings i may no longer dwell though was gamelin anon without tarrying made master outlaw and crowned here king though was gamelin crowned king of outlaws and walked a while under wood shaws the false knight his brother was sheriff and sire and lead his brother and dight for hate and for ire though were his bondmen sorry and nothing glad when gamelin her lord wolf's head was cried and mad and sent out of his men where they might him find for to see gamelin under buddha lined to tell him tidings how the wind was went and all his good rev and his men shent one they had him found on knees they him set and a doon with their hood and here lord gret sire wrath you not for the good rude for we have brought you tidings but they be not good nor is thy brother sheriff and hath the bailey and he hath indicted thee and wolf's head doth thee cry alas said gamelin that ever i was so slake that i nay had broke his neck though i his rig break goeth greeteth him well mine husband's and wife i will bin at next shire have god my life gamelin come well ready to the next shire and there was his brother both lord and sire gamelin come boldly into the moot hall and put a doon his hood among the lords all god save you all lordings that now here be but broke back sheriff evil must thou be why hast thou do me that shame and villa nigh for to late indict me and wolves heed me cry though thought a false knight for to bin a reek and lead take amelin most he no more speak 
might there be no more grace but gamelin at last was cast into prison and fettered full fast gamelin hath a brother that hight sir oot as good a knight and hand as might goen on foot anon there yead a messenger to that good knight and told him altogether how gamelin was dight anon as i oot heard how gamelin was a dight he was wonder sorry was he nothing like and leet saddle a steed and the way he name and to his twain brethren anon right he came sire said sire oot to the sheriff though we been but three brethren shall we never be mo and thou hast imprisoned the best of us all such another brother evil mut him befall sir oot said the false knight let be thy curse by god for thy words he shall fare the worse to the king's prison anon he is anum and there he shall abide till the justice come pardie said sir oot better it shall be i bid him to main priests that thou grant him me till the next sitting of deliverance and then let gamelin stand to his chance brother in such a forward i take him to thee and by thy father's soul that thee begat in me but if he be ready one the justice sit thou shalt bear the judgment for all thy great wit i grant will said sir oot that it so be let deliver him anon and take him to me though was gamelin delivered to sire oot his brother and that night dwelled that on with that other on the morn said gamelin to sire oot the hand brother he said i moot for sooth from thee wend to look now my young men lead here life whether they live in, in joy or else in strife by god said sire oot that is a cold reed now i see that all the cark shall fall in on mine heed for when the justice sit and thou be naught he found i shall anon be taken in thy steady bound brother said gamelin dismay thee not for by saint jane in gales that many man has sought if that god almighty hold my life and wit i will be there ready when the justice sit then said sir oot to gamelin god shield thee from shame come one thou seest time and bring us out of blame litheth and lesteneth and holdeth you still and ye shall hear how gamelin had all his will gamelin went again under wood rice and found there playing young men of price there was young gamelin clad and blithe e now when he found his merry men under wood bow gamelin and his men talked in in fear and they had good game here master to hear they told it in him of adventures that they had found and gamelin him told it again how he was fast he bound while gamelin was outlawed had he no course there was no man that for him furred the worse but abbots and priors monk and canon of them left he nothing one he might him numb while gamelin and his men made mirths writhe the false knight his brother evil might he thrive for he was fast about both day and other for to hire the quest to hang in his brother gamelin stood in a day and as he beheld the woods and the shawls in the wild fell he thought on his brother how he him behaved that he would be ready when the justice see he thought well that he wold without a delay come afore the justice to keep in his day and said to his younger men dighteth you year for one the justice sit we must be there for i am under borrow till that i come and my brother for me to prison shall be numb by saint james said his young men and thou read thereto ordain how it shall be and it shall be due while gamelin was coming there the justice sat the false knight his brother forget he not that to hire the men on his quest to hang in his brother though he had not that one he would have that other though came gamelin from under wood rice and brought with him his young men of price i see well gamelin the justice is set go aforn adam and look how it sped adam went into the hall and looked all about he see there stand lords great and stout and sir oot his brother fettered well fast though went adam out of hall as he were aghast adam said to gamelin and to his fellows all sir oot stanty fettered in the moot hall young men said gamelin this ye herein all sir 
Hoot, stamped he fettered in the moot hall. If God give us grace, well for to do, he shall it a beg that brought him thereto. Then said Adam, that looks had whore, Christ's curse must he have that him bond so sore, and thou wilt gamelin do after my reed. There is no one in the hall shall bear away his heed. Adam said gamelin, we will not do none so. We will slee the guilty and let the other go. I will into the hall and with the justice speak on him that been guilty. I will been a reek. Let none scape at the door. Take young men, ye, for I will be justice this day, domes for to deem. God speed me this day at my new work. Adam, come on with me, for thou shalt be my clerk. His men answered in him and bade him do in his best, and if thou to us have need, thou shalt find us pressed. We will not stand with thee while that we may dure, and but we work manly, pay us none hewer. Young men, said Gabalin, so must I will thee, as trustier master ye shall find of me. Right there the justice sat in the hall, in went Gamelin amongst them all. Gamelin let unfetter his brother out of bend. Then said Sir Oot, his brother that was hend, thou hadst almost Gamelin, dwelled too long, for the quest is out on me that I should hong. Brother, said Gamelin, so God give me good rest. This day they sure been hanged that been on thy quest, and the justice both that is the judge man, and the sheriff both through him it began. Then said Gamelin to the justice, now is thy power e done, thou must needs arise, thou hast seven dumbs that been evil dight. I was sitting in thy seat and dressing them aright. The justice sat still and rose not anew, and Gamelin clavered a to his cheek boon gamelin took him in his arm and no more spack but threw him over the bar and his arm to brack durst none to gamelin say but good for feared of the company that without stood gamelin set him down in the justice's seat and sire oot his brother by him and adam at his feet when gamelin was he said in the justice's stead hearkeneth of a board that gamelin dead is leet feeder the justice and his false brother indeed him come to the bar that one with that other though gamelin had thus he doon had he no rest till he had inquired who was on the quest for to deem his brother sir oot for to hang ere he wist which they were him thoughtful full lang but as soon as gamelin wist where they were he did him every one veteran in fear and bringing him to the bar and set him in rue by my faith said the justice the sheriff is a shrew then said gamelin to the justice thou hast eve dome of the worse a size and the twelve scissors that were of the quest they shall been hanged this day so have i good rest then said the sheriff to young gamelin lord i cry the mercy brother art thou mine therefore said gamelin have thou christ's curse for as thou were master yet i shall have worse for to make short tale and not to tarry long he ordained him a quest for of his men so strong the justice and the sheriff both hung high to wave and with the ropes and with the wind dry and the twelve scissors so have that wreck all they were hanged fast by the neck thus ended the false knight with his treachery that ever had he lad his life in falseness and folly he was hanged by the neck and not by the purse that was the meat that he had for his father's curse Sir Ute was eldest, and Gamelin was Ying. They went in with their friends even to the king. They made peace with the king of the best of size. The king loved well Sir Ute, and made him just as. And after the king made Gamelin, both in east and west, chief justice of all his free forest, all his white young men the king forgave their guilt, and Smith Sithen in the good office the king them hath he built. Thus won Gamelin his land and his lead, and rack him of his enemies and quit them hear me and sir oot his brother made him his heir and sithen wedden gamelin a wife both good and fair they live in together while that christ ruled and sithen was gamelin graven under mould and so shall we all may there no man flee god bring us to the joy that ever shall be end of volume four end of chapter forty nine
End of the Canterbury Tales by Geoffrey Chaucer.